What's going on growers? It's James Pagioni coming to you live from Jersey. Today I want to show you what happens when you bury sardines under a tomato plant and let you know if it's worth it or not. Let's go! Earlier this spring, just a few months ago, I decided to run an experiment where I took two tomato plants, both the same age and the same variety, cherry bomb, and decided to plant them a few feet apart. The only difference was with one tomato, I decided to bury a can of sardines underneath it, while the other one, I didn't. For the first cherry bomb tomato, I just pulled the wood chip mulch back with a rake until I got to the soil level. Then I dug out a section of soil with a small shovel about three times the width of the cup that I was planting from, and about, I'd say nine or 10 inches deep. Next, I opened the can of sardines, and for this, I used the sardines that have no salt added and I tried to get ones with as much of the skin and fish parts as possible. I also made sure it was sardines that were in water and not in oil, wild caught and natural. And after that, I then put the whole can of sardines at the bottom of the hole. You can see them down there. After that, I covered the sardines with about four inches of my natural sandy soil, getting it to the right height so it would be perfect for the tomato to set in and still burying the stem a little bit. After that, I watered the area in so the soil and the sardines had some moisture. Then I put a bit more natural soil on top of that, then some of my homemade soil to finish it off, just so the tomato would have a better time adjusting to its new home. After that, I sprinkled some mycos onto the roots, inoculating the plant with the mycorrhizal association, then transplanted the tomato into its spot and backfilled with natural soil. After that, I top dressed with a little of my own homemade compost and covered that with some wood chip mulch, then watered the whole thing in and it was done. I never had an issue with any cats or raccoons digging up my sardines. I know some of you will mention that, but there was never a problem. That might be because some of the thick wood chip mulch that I have on the ground here, and also because I have the whole property fenced in relatively well. For the other cherry bomb tomato plant, I followed the same exact procedure, moving the wood chips till I got to the natural soil, then digging into that natural soil and planting into the natural soil, then top dressing with my homemade soil. Except I did not bury sardines underneath this one. This plan acts more as the control for the other one. Now, a few months have passed and let's check out the result of our little experiment. Here are the plants right here. And the reason I planted two plants of the same variety, one with sardines under it and one without, is so that I could have a control, which is this plant right here. Essentially, it's just a plant that I can base my results off of. So this is with no additional uh, fertilizer or fish or anything, while this one on the side here is with the additional sardines. So I did this because I don't want to just say that, oh, this works or it doesn't work. I want to have something to be able to compare my results against. So that's why I have the two planted right here. The reason I chose sardines as my fertilizer is because fish itself is always like known to be a great fertilizer. The Native Americans have used it you know, a long time ago when they used to bury fish underneath corn. And I thought sardines would be good because it's so easily, readily and accessible because most people probably just have them like in their cupboards inside, as opposed to something like Manhattan or like a fish head and going to get that somewhere. I figured, you know, a lot of people just have the sardines. So it's readily accessible. Also, it, it doesn't like stink as much as some of the fish heads and stuff do because it's like something that we would eat, the sardines. It doesn't have as much as an off-putting smell in my opinion, and it's a little cleaner to work with. So I thought sardines would be a good substitute for something like a regular fish or a fish head. Here they are. Let's check the plants out in detail and see if there's a considerable difference and we'll decide whether or not it's actually worth it to bury sardines under your tomato plants. As we step back a little bit, we'll notice that there isn't a huge difference in size, although the one with sardines that I planted under it, which is right here, seems to have overall more growth. You'll notice it's a little, t it's tall, taller than the other one and at the top we have a double top here. So it, without that double top, this thing would be another foot tall probably. The level of production is really good as we come down. We'll notice most of this fruit is actually on the back side as opposed to the, to the front side like the other one, but loaded with fruit, excellent. And this tomato did really good through the hot part of the year. We'll notice the ripe fruit down here. And some of the other tomato plants, as we slowly move up, after we look at these tomatoes, you'll notice that we have a lot of full sets here. Some of the other plants had uh, sets where they didn't fruit because it got so hot during the middle part of the summer, but this thing looks like it just has just excelled along and it's got an amazing amount of fruit on it. This is what we love to see. On the other hand, this tomato plant looks like it's doing well also, but it is a little smaller 
probably because it's lacking a little more nutrition than the other plant. Still happy with this plant overall. I mean, you can't make any complaints. It's a beautiful looking plant. One thing that I'm wondering though is if it's gonna slow down in production as the season progresses because I didn't add any additional fertilizer around this plant. So as it continues to grow throughout the season and draws nutrition from the soil, I wonder if it's going to deplete the soil too much. On the other hand, this cherry bomb tomato, the one with the sardines planted underneath it, this thing should continue to excel as the season progresses along because it has that additional fertilizer underneath it. So the fish wasn't immediately available for the plant to take in because it's not bioavailable in that natural state. What has to happen is we need a bridge or an intermediary uh, actor like uh, the microorganisms that are in the soil or the worms or the bacteria or whatever to break down that fish into uh, into a, a way that's bioavailable for the roots to be able to take it up and this plant to drink it in. So think about that for a second. We're gonna take something, a waste, well, it could be a waste product like a fish, and we're gonna convert that into one of nature's most delicious fresh snacks right here. Tomatoes, I love doing that. And something that's so cool is we're gonna be fertilizing this plant from underneath because we buried that fish. And then if we want, we could also come around and put compost around the plant or even some additional fertilizer. So we could fertilize it from the bottom and the top from both directions. I think that's pretty unique and I think that's a pretty cool thing about burying the fish. So again, I'm super excited to try one of these tomatoes because I took something that I don't really like that much, fish, and we got a lot of the nutrition from that fish and converted that into something that I love eating and is just so delicious, fresh cherry tomatoes. Let's try one and see if they're actually good. Let's try this cherry tomato right here. Looks beautiful. This is the one which I bury the sardines underneath. So let's see if it maybe has a little bonus flavor compared to the other one, because we'll try the other one as well. Mm. Mm. Excellent flavor. Let's try the one without sardines underneath it now. Mm. Nothing considerable. I can't say that there was like a major difference in flavor, which is not what I'm expecting. My overall verdict would be that yes, you should put sardines underneath some of your tomato plants if you already have them and stuff. I don't think it's something that you should probably do every single year, but I think it's great for tomatoes because tomato plants like be, being planted in the same spot every year. So this year, if I planted the, uh, if I buried the sardines underneath it, next year it'll help uh, build the soil and, and improve the fertility of the soil for the next year too. Because by adding this fish, we're not just getting uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, we're also getting a lot of trace elements that are within the fish that maybe our soil doesn't have. So it's adding more of that stuff, building up the organic matter, and in the end, to take something like a rotten, or not rotten, to take something like a dead fish and convert that into incredible nutrient-dense food, getting the nutrition from the fish and putting that into the tomato, I mean, I think it's a great idea, and I don't think you can really go wrong doing it. That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I found it to be really fun me and Tuck to do like a little of a garden experiment, something different than we usually do. Maybe we'll do more of them in the future, but it is fun to kind of just, you know, play with nature a little bit and to see how amazing it is to convert a fish into an amazing tomato. I mean, it just blows my mind sometimes, but that's one of the things that gets me so obsessed with gardening. I wanted to thank Jeff Lutjens uh, for your new channel membership and for being a part of Team Grow. It means so much to me and Tuck. I'm sorry if I, mispronounce your last name but I hope I at least got the Jeff part right and uh, I also wanted to thank any of the new super thanks that are being given to the channel it means a lot to me and Tuck that you guys are contributing so we just wanted to thank you this guy's been wandering around I don't even know where he is right now but I'll just give you an overview of the garden he's somewhere Tuck where you at boy Tucky I don't know he's probably looking for a cucumber or digging a hole but that's what happens when you're in a forest sometimes you can end up getting lost but we really appreciate you guys Appreciate you guys being here. It's a beautiful day. We're trying to soak it in, hanging out on the pallet raised bed with the zinnias, the flowers, and the tomatoes, and life is good. We'll catch you guys back real soon. Tuck and James, we 